Hi, this is Carola with Metal Life Magazine. I am sitting here on the comfortable tour bus here at uh, the House of Blues in Anaheim. I am here with Sammy. How's it going, Sammy? Hi. Uh, it's, yeah, it's nice to be here in Anaheim. I'm doing great, thanks. Yeah? How was the tour at the at, uh, House of Blues Los Angeles? You guys are making your House of Blues rounds, huh? <laughs> How was that last night? I know there are a lot of people anticipating you. It was great. The crowd was amazing. I mean, there's, a, there's always a lot of Mexicans coming there for us, which is great, <laughs> which, is, which is perfect. And then, yeah, it's a pretty long tour. We started in, in Tokyo like a couple of weeks ago and, and then went over to Colombia. Now we're doing wow. the States like for a month. And then I have one day off. I get to go home and, and then... And then we do a European tour, also with Arch Enemy, but then yeah. we change spots. You got Europe. you got Shining over there, really cool Norway band. I like yeah, those guys. Yeah, and Marty Friedman. Yeah, it's the it's the Norwegian. Oh, Shining. Okay, it's, okay. It's the Norwegian Shining, not the Swedish one. Yes. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. I almost got confused there. Thank you. <laughs> this is a silly thing to mention, but um, I've never injured myself at a concert. But the last time I broke my ribs for the first time was actually at a creative concert. I broke two ribs during Tormentor, ironically, and I just thought, <laughs> it's a great story now, and what a better band to honestly, like, go hard for. So I actually wanted to ask you, what's uh, the most memorable or worst injury that you've sustained, either while performing or perhaps attending a concert yourself? Well, I'm lucky that I, that I uh, never, never while performing, but you can see this. Oh, yeah. That's a stage dive. <laughs> That's a stage dive? <laughs> That's pretty awesome. <laughs> Actually, it, it opened twice. First, first, oh. was a, first in a gym class when I was a kid, and the second time at a, at a metal show. Oh, what's uh? I, I, but I was fourteen. Oh, you were fourteen at the show. Okay. Well, you obviously did something to that because it is, it's visible now. Wow. Do you remember what uh, what show it was, or were you practicing, or? <laughs> this is too funny. <laughs> first, first of all, no, I hope nobody ever breaks his or his or her ribs at a show. Should be a it. It, 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 should, it should be a friendly form of aggression. It's silly if you get hurt, but what the hell? Shit happens sometimes when, uh -huh. when you're having fun. And that gig, that was Stone. It was a Finnish band back then when I was a fin Finland. Yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> that's right. Hmm. Your band, what is it called? Waltari. <laughs> I listened to a little bit of that today, and it's very interesting how well-rounded you are <laughs> as a musician, considering the kind of work you do in Waltari <laughs> and the kind of work you do in Creator. I wanted to ask you, first of all, about the role that Finland's music scene played in you as a musician. That's, that's the first part <laughs> of the question. And then the second part is how the German influence kind of, kind of seeped into you as a musician as well. Well, obviously, because I was born there and I spent my childhood there and my my youth, and and then uh, I still live there in Finland now. You so, do. So, so so that's that's a, obviously the scene that was going on there when I started playing in bands. So obvi obviously, it, it's it's uh, affected everything, I, right. I, I guess. But but if if there is a if there is something like a signature Finnish type of uh, musical thing. I guess there might be, but it 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 it, it's, it often uh, is, is uh, connected with melancholy and minor really? mi minor stuff and like stuff like that musically. Not otherwise, I'm not a melancholic person at all. Right? No, but, you're but, not. But but uh, but if you, if you listen to to folk music like Finnish folk music, it's it's all often like like uh, connected with, with, with that kind of stuff. And uh, but but Valtteri, on the other hand, that was not like anything like that at all. It was like crossover stuff, and it was uh, it was it was a uh, you know it's very like almost pop punk al 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 and almost too cheerful. Yeah, it, it, is, it was very eclectic, and I found that very interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, at that time when when we made the first Valtteri albums, it was like. We wanted to do all kinds of stuff, all kinds of music, and, and like combine it together. That was the whole idea of the band, and I guess it right. still is. But my other band, Barren Earth, that's that's again, mm -hmm. that's like like melancholic, uh, death, progressive metal or whatever. So there's something Finnish about that for sure. Okay. And and uh, but what comes to to the to the German German thing? I mean, I used to live there in the 90s when I was what was it 93, 94 in Berlin, just because I wanted to. Have a different scene, and and uh, Helsinki was kind of a boring city at the time, to be honest. It's not anymore. These okay. these, these days, it's great. And I lived lived there for a couple of years, and that's how I ended up that I got hooked up with the Creator guys because I was filling in first as a, as a okay. uh, because because the other guitarist hurt his hand. Right. Okay. 
so later on I started doing this on a, on a permanent basis but I like it very much because um, creator was also when I was a kid you know it was a um, I actually listened to them. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just think it's very interesting to hear the music of... Valtteri. Yes, Valtteri. Okay, yeah. so it's just, it, it was a very pop-punk eclectic thing, and mm. and Creator especially now is, is I mean, you've got Jens Bogert on your team, so everything's really crisp and clean and precise, mm. and then just everything you wrote in Phantom just seems so much more disciplined, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's really... It's really interesting to see that you can just kind of flip the switch on that between the two, and I think it makes you a very versatile musician. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, 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 with Creator, the, the, the music of Creator, it doesn't have so much to do about jamming and improvising, but right. my other projects do. That's the one reason why I keep, still keep these other projects alive. <laughs> right. Even even so, when you're writing solos for Creator, it's, it's a different approach than when you're doing it for Walter no, as well. Well, yeah. I mean, it all starts from an improvisation right. point of view, but but then I work on it, and then I then I, and it also has to do how the song is, you know, and 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 it has to have a beginning and a middle part and an end. So so you know, it's it's, right. it's um, basically it's similar similar. Now I heard that you also play the sitar. Is that true? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You yeah. do. When did you did you pick that up before you picked up the guitar? Did that kind of lead in, or how did those? No, that happened like when I was when I was around when I was around twenty two or something okay. like that, and and and. and uh, it was actually a guy called Pete Valli from this Finnish band called Kingston Wall. Okay. If you ever have a chance to check them out, check them out. Wall? They don't exist anymore, but back then they did. Okay. And he used to play the sitar, and then funnily enough, it happened that my cousin got married with an Indian woman back in the day, and she okay. brought me a sitar as a present from India. Oh, and wow. I just started getting interested into it. I read a couple of books about it and played it at home. and and, and uh, after a while, because there's not too many people in Finland who play the sitar, I was getting studio jobs all the time for all possible <laughs> bands. It was great. I even played the Nightwish album. <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. Did you play with Tiamat as well? Yeah, yeah. You did yeah, some stunts yeah. with them and Grip Inc. too, yeah. right? Yeah. But ever since I was a, ever since I was a kid, that it's always very important to make music and jam around with as yeah. many people as possible because yeah. because that's the best way of learning and new approaches about music and it, and it just makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> What's it like to be a young band in Germany or in Finland today? And how is it different from when you started playing, at least from what you can see? Well, I think it... Um, <laughs> well, back, back when I started in, in the 90s, of course, CDs were sold, but they're not sold anymore. <laughs> Nobody buys them anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's, that's the main difference. Of course, it's much tougher also these days because yeah. there's so many bands. Back back then, there weren't so many, but everybody's in a band now, which is great. I mean, this diversity, you know, what could be better? I guess to, to start with a, with a, with a new band uh, was tough back then, but it's even tougher now. Yeah, <laughs> it is because mm. people just want to go in for two years and see what the scene's like, and mm. then just drop out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and I noticed, noticed like like a lot of bands, they can do like two or three albums. Maybe the fourth or fifth will be noticed, even though right. they were good, the ones that whatever band it is were, were doing before. It, it takes time. It does. Mm -hmm. It takes much time. Especially in the years. metal world. My last question for you, and I mean, if you could shed any light on this, that would be awesome. I've always wondered, do you know how you guys came up with waving the flag of hate because it makes so much sense that you wave uh, around a flag and call it the flag of hate. And also how many flags you've had to go through in your uh, <laughs> many strenuous uh, weeks of touring. Well, <laughs> we don't have it with us now. <laughs> oh, what? Oh. Because, because, because some, some, somehow we felt that we've, we've done it too many times and, and, and maybe on the next tour again. <laughs> but you know, this is a question you would of course have to ask Miller because Flag of Hate is a song that he wrote right, when he was like, 16. Right. So it is a kind of a naive song, of course. It is. But you know, of course for Germans waving the flag is always a little bit suspicious. But, <laughs> but, 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 uh, but, 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 he, but, but he does it anyway, I guess as a kind of a protest towards that, so okay. that's a part of the joke as well. But now I'm so mm. sad that Flag's not here. <laughs> Aww. Thank you so much for your time, Sammy. I really, really appreciate it and uh, look forward to uh, seeing you uh, at the show. You look like you're already getting ready to uh, shred with that Red Bull. Woohoo! Called Shred Bull by Sammy. Exactly. Great. <laughs> Thank well, you for your time. Thanks for your interest. It's wonderful.